Hey guys, it's Emily from Wadbottom. I'm gonna show you how to tie dye some of our specially made goods that we came out with. So first, there's a couple things. We've got four tops that we designed to be tie dye. It's this hoodie sweatshirt with the back design. We also have a white tank top that says Sassy Classy Savage. We have a crop hoodie with a rough edge down at the bottom. It has a white logo here, but it's gonna look so cool when tie-dyed. So there's that item. And then we also have the crop festival tank. It also has that white logo and it looks really cool tie-dyed. Um, actually, I have one right here. So this one is the same. I tie-dye with two of the colors that come in the pack. It does come with three, um, but this was the before. And so, you know, I don't have a lot of experience tie-dyeing, so the fact that I can come up with something that looks like this, I think is pretty cool. And I tell you that because I don't want you to stress out. This should be fun. All right, so your kit comes with a few things. You get three um, fiber reactive dyes. These are not your Hobby Lobby tie-dye kits that we got the best dye that will hook on to the fabric better than what you could buy at a craft store. Um, we also included soda ash, which helps with the dye fusing to the fabrics. Uh, this is all just my Google and YouTube knowledge that I <laughs> know all these things. Um, so there's that. And then you have rubber bands, latex-free gloves, and we included this little mini spray bottle because if you wanted to get a top like this normal is boring one and bleach dye it, you can put some of your dye from here into this bottle and spray these lighter colors and create a really cool effect. Um, you could Google how to really make it even cooler if you wanted to, but with a little bit of bleach, some dye, whatnot, you can make some really, really cool tops. Also in the kit comes with a little how-to. So you have your steps and then you also kind of have some tips. So in step one, it's get your top wet and then squeeze out the water. So when I was getting these wet, it took a while. I had to like go like this to really get the wetness everywhere. Um, on a side note though, just to make you feel better about, you know, making mistakes with your dye, when I first was testing whether these tops could be dyed, because generally they say more cotton the better, but some tops just don't, you know, they don't have cotton, honestly. So anyway, I did this one. I did not get it wet first. <laughs> I didn't Google anything. I didn't look at step-by-step -step instructions on how to dye anything. And it still came out looking pretty spectacular. So I show you that so that you feel better about, or feel more relaxed about dyeing your rod bottom goodies because most likely it'll turn out really great. All right, so I'm gonna go get all my tops wet. All right guys, so I have all my wet tops. I tried not to wring them out because that can hurt the fiber, so I did a lot of like squeezing and they're pretty damp. I actually have no idea how, like it's just dampness um, that you want. Okay, we're gonna put this down. All right, so now once we're at this point where you need to start mixing your dye, you need to put on your gloves. Okay, I have my gloves on. I'm gonna open up my dye bottles. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is put in some of the soda ash. Okay, so my soda baggie. Um, they say a fourth teaspoon of soda ash for like a four ounce bottle. And I'm not gonna measure this because a little more, a little less isn't gonna make a difference. So I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna sprinkle some in. The big thing you want to remember here is that once you mix the dyes and all this stuff together, you um, need to use it within two hours because then something happens. Maybe the dye won't adhere to the fabrics as well or something. So anyway, just a word, a heads up. I don't know why, it's just what they say. Okay, so, oops, no, don't, don't put the lid back on. Okay, so I just have a little blender bottle put the water into the top. So for the amount of dye we gave you, you should be able to tie four items, give or take. 
Um, when I was doing this earlier, just to test, I did three tops and I had a left, I had enough left over that um, I was contemplating tie-dyeing this 20 year old jean jacket I have. So then you're gonna put the top back on and you're gonna shake it up. You wanna make sure that all this dye that you can kind of see down below um, is all mixed and incorporated. In terms of order wise, you might wanna knot up your shirts first. It doesn't really matter, as long as you use these within two hours. Okay, so I've got my three colors. Now it's time to knot our um, not our tops. So let's start with the Sassy Classy Savage. I think, oh, here would be one benefit to tie, knotting these first is that even though everything is packaged up nicely and not messy, um, I still got some dye on the gloves. So then when I touched this, I now see I have dye, a little bit of dye on the shirt, but it's not gonna matter, I'm dying anyway, but just a heads up. So I am going to do that and I'm gonna fold it in half and then start rotating. Um, you, I saw a really cool way to twist this um, by using a fork, you stick a fork in it and then you start to turn it, but I don't feel like getting up again um, now that I'm down here. So I'm just twisting it um, clockwise, the shirt's going around it and here we are. I mean, it's not too complicated. Get it all the way around. And then I'm gonna take some rubber bands and I want the cross section of the rubber bands to all kind of land in the same spot. Okay, so here's item number one. It's is going to be a double spiral on the shirt and it is wet. I'm just gonna set it aside and do the next one. Okay, so for this one, um, because there's a tiger on the back, I'm gonna do more of a tiger stripe, which is kind of what I have here, and that all is required is to kind of bunch it all together. So I'm gonna kind of just grab folds from the front and the back at an angle like this. And then I'm gonna just bring it together. Here's the arms. I'll do the same with the arms. I really honestly have no idea what I'm doing. I'm kind of hoping it turns out well. It will turn out great, I know it will. But I, just, <laughs> I keep saying this to let you know that don't judge me and enjoy yourself. All right, so I've kind of all gotten it folded together and now I'm just gonna put rubber bands all over the thing. All right, so now the Beast sweatshirt is all tied up. I'm just looking on the, both sides so that I can see the folds because I'm gonna want to put dye on the top of the folds. So I'm gonna, you know, if there's any too much bunching or anything, just kind of free it up. Okay, so that's that one. Now for the crop hoodie. So last time I did this one, it was a spiral, but I feel like I wanted more dye in this area. Um, because the white screen printing looks really cool because it doesn't get dyed, so everything else gets dyed. So I think, I think what I'm gonna do is do the kind of the bullseye thing. So you take a portion of your fabric and you kind of make a little nub and then you put the rubber band around that nub. 
Try not to put it, you know, around where the nipples go. <laughs> you might get funny looks. All right, guys, so I, I'm done adding all the little nubs. You can see this is what it looks like when it's all knotted up. All right, guys, I'm now on the last tank. It's the Festival Crop Tank. Um, here's what it looks like before it's dyed, and I'm going to try and create kind of like a rainbow this way. So based on my Google research, I have to pick it up down here. And I think here it is. And I put um, rubber bands all up and down. So here we go. Here we go. All right, that is done being knotted. Let's just look at the steps really quick. So I did step one, which is getting your top wet and then squeezing out the water. Um, I am wearing my gloves. I mixed the soda ash and mixed all the dye, which is step three. Um, step four is twist and knot and rubber band everything. So that's done. Um, and step five is kind of where it gets fun. It says use plastic bottles to place dye wherever you want on the fabric. So um, what I don't have here with me um, at the office at, to make this video is a cookie cooling rack. Um, I found it really helpful when I was dying at home with my testers to put the knotted up pre-tie-dyed thing on the cookie rack and then the dye kind of drips down. So in lieu of that, I have a lid <laughs> um, here that I will just do all the dyeing on. So another thing you'll want to have handy also is like a bag from the grocery store or a little trash bag or a Ziploc bag to put your individual item in the bag because you don't want it to dry out while it's sitting. Okay, so I'm just gonna have that here. All right, so this is the festival tank and I wanted that rainbow look. So I'm gonna put the dye kind of in locations where people put dye. All right, I'm still, yeah, this is step five. Step five is kind of the end of this process and then you come back the next day and you do the rest. So let's get these lids off, shall we? Okay, so that is the festival tank I just did and hopefully it turns out to be a rainbow pattern. Um, looks really nice. And now I'm gonna put the thing in the baggie where it will sit until I'm ready to rinse it out about eight to 24 hours longer. The longer the better generally. Um, I'll do, like if I did this right now, I'd probably wait till 24 hours later, you know. All right, so now let's do the crop sweatshirt that I did all the little nubby things. So for this one, um, you put the dye on really. I have no special like secrets in order to make this look good, but um, I know it will, it'll look good. So I'm also kind of crunching it together because I know that the folds are what kind of keep the dye from going really deep into everything. So I kind of do want that um, I still want some white spots to come out in, in this item. So I am scrunching it together and now I'll put the dye on. And it's gonna be pretty random. I have no idea what this will end up looking like other than it will be good. <laughs> oh.
Okay, so that's this one. Um, I'm just gonna flip it over and put some dye on the other side too because you can see that's what it looks like. So I'm just flipping it over. I'm gonna try and match the color dye that I had on the other side. All right, so that's that one. I'm gonna put it in a bag. All right, this is the Beast sweatshirt and it has that zigzaggy pattern. I think it would look really good with black and blue. So I'm gonna do only black and blue on this one. All right, so I just finished doing the Beast sweatshirt. I had to dye one side and then flip it over and dye the other side. And so now I'm gonna put it in the plastic bag. All right, so I'm doing the last tank. This is the Sassy Classy Savage tank um, with that black lettering. And I did that the spiral design. So here we go, the last one. All right, that was the last tie dye. I'm gonna put it in a bag and then I'm gonna, I'll let it sit for eight to 24 hours. And then I will do the next thing on the step, uh, step list, which is rinse the top out under warm water while I'm tying it. And then once it's untied, rinse it under cool water until the water runs clear. But that will be for tomorrow. I'm gonna put this in a bag, wait eight to 24 hours, and then we'll come back and we'll reveal.